Hello there everybody and welcome back to another pseudo repentance news video but mainly this is a video about anti-birth and then repentance once it releases. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite features in anti-birth and soon to be in repentance, the planetarium. For those that don't know, planetariums are a rare room in the game that give you a constellation based item and other goodies. The room starts with a 1% chance to spawn on your run, but there's an easy way to make them spawn more often that we'll talk about in this video. Now I know what you're saying, Repentance isn't out yet, so this video is useless, and to an extent you're correct, but planetariums have been all but confirmed to be in Repentance, and they're likely going to work similarly to Anti-Birth since not many mechanics in that sense have changed from Anti-Birth to Repentance. So if this video ends up being false information in three months when Repentance releases, please don't comment that I'm an idiot. At least for that reason, you can call me an idiot for other reasons, or you could be nice to me and tell me you appreciate me, that's up to you, but that's beside the point. In this video, we're going to talk about what planetariums are, how to get them, some of the great items in the planetarium room, and then also the math behind how you can all but guarantee seeing a planetarium on your run. Without further ado, let's get started. So what is a planetarium? As I said before, planetariums are a special room that can spawn in anti-burst similar to a library or double key room or arcade. Inside the planetarium, you'll find a constellation-based item, and typically one to three blue fires and some tarot cards. These blue fires can help you get some soul hearts, and the cards can help you with a small boost, but the real benefit is the constellation item. So, as many of you know, there's a few great constellation items in base Isaac, such as Capricorn, Sagittarius, Pisces, Libra. But Anti-Birth adds so many more great constellation items that can completely transform your game and save your run. On a given run, a planetarium has a 1% chance to spawn, but that percentage does grow by an unknown amount if you have Magic 8 Ball or Crystal Ball. The chance then increases by 20% if you skip an item room, not just skipping the item, but never entering the item room at all. This creates a sort of strategy to getting a planetarium, but we're going to talk about the math behind that later. For now, let's take a look at some of these incredible anti-birth items that you can find in the planetarium. Uranus. Haha, <laughs> funny word, but this is probably my favorite planetarium item. This item transforms your tears into icicles that upon killing an enemy will instead turn them into ice that you can then push around the room to smash into other enemies. With certain tear effects, this can create large AoE explosions that can help you clear rooms fast. Saturnus. Saturnus is tiny planet, but good. Launching an array of shots around Isaac, these tiers act as pseudo-orbitals orbiting Isaac at a good distance and holding all tier effects that you have. This makes it really easy to handle enemies that chase you down while you're firing normal shots at range. Mars Mars is such a unique item because it just straight up adds a brand new mechanic to the game, dashing. Those that have watched me play other games in the past know that I love a dash mechanic in games and this is no exception. Dealing damage to enemies with the dash feels good and it allows for a bit of extra mobility in rooms. It also provides invincibility frames, which, you know me, abusing that to min-max floors by visiting curse rooms and playing beggars and blood machines for free is just a huge bonus. Mercurius. A speedrunner's dream, this item keeps all doors open on the floor, allowing you to freely traverse to and from your destination without having to worry about fighting the rooms you don't want to. I personally think this one is actually too overpowered, but it can be a lifesaver on a tough run through Mausoleum. Terra. One of the most unique tier effects, it turns Isaac's tears into rocks, allowing them to destroy other rocks, extinguish blue fires, and damage rock-based enemies such as the Tough Twins in Anti-Birth. Unique tier effects with great animations help make the game feel more alive, and it also helps that the item is quite strong. If that isn't proof that a planetarium is worth it, I really don't know what is, but it's still just a 1% chance by default to see one of these. So how do we increase that chance? As we mentioned, skipping an item room increases the chance of seeing a planetarium by a flat 20% chance. That means that if you skip one item room, you have a 21% chance to get a planetarium generated. If you skip a second item room, you have a 41% chance to get a planetarium, and you see how that goes. Once you get a planetarium, the chance drops to zero regardless of how many item rooms you skip, so what is the ideal strategy here? 
To understand this, we need to dig into probability and statistics itself. Since planetariums can only spawn on floors before the womb, we can calculate, using binomial distributions, the chance of seeing a planetarium on the run. First, we have to determine how many floors we can see in total. So planetariums cannot spawn on basement 1, so then either downpour 1 and 2, or basement 2 and downpour 2, then mines and caves, and depths and mausoleum. So this puts you at six possible chances to spawn a planetarium, assuming that you decide to go down the alternate path introduced by anti-birth, as that will add one extra floor that you can visit. So using a binomial distribution, we can determine that if we have a 1% chance to see a planetarium, and six chances to see it, then we have around a 5% chance to see a planetarium on a given run. This means that you're going to see a planetarium naturally around every 20 runs. I don't like those odds at all, so let's change things around a little bit. Say that we skip the first item room on the run. This now provides us with a 21% chance over the course of 6 floors. Using binomial distributions again, this comes out to be a 76% chance to see a planetarium. Now those are some odds I can get behind. Skip one item room, and essentially have a 76% chance to get an upgraded, better item room later on the run. But I know what you're saying now. Why skip the first item room that doesn't need a key, and instead skip the second item room that uses a key? Well, let's run the numbers. Now we're skipping the second floor item room, which means that we'll only have five possible floors for the planetarium to spawn instead of six. Using our binomial distributions, this comes out to be a 69% chance, dropping around 7% from skipping the first item room instead. If you're a bit riskier and you prefer to have the extra key, then you may choose to skip the second floor, but I like maximizing that chance as much as possible. But maybe you aren't happy with a 76% chance and you want that to be much higher, well, you could skip two item rooms instead. If we skip the first two item rooms, this puts us at a 41% chance over the course of five floors. Using our binomial distributions once more, we'll find that this comes out to be a 93% chance to see a planetarium. Now those are some really great odds, but you're essentially losing an item on your run to make it happen, which may not be worth it. But maybe you really think that you have bad luck and just want to see a planetarium. You could skip three item rooms and put yourself at a 61% chance over the course of four floors. Excessive, but possible. This comes out to be around a 98% chance to see a planetarium. But maybe that 2% happens. If we skip four item rooms, you'll now have an 81% chance to get a planetarium over the course of three floors, which puts you at a 99.3% percent chance to see a planetarium. Don't do this. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this helps you understand a bit more about planetariums and the math behind how to ensure you get them on your runs. Once again, this information is not 100% confirmed for repentance, but it is pretty damn near confirmed for repentance, and I will be sure to update this video if anything I said is false on repentance's launch. Thanks so much for watching. Check out some of my anti-birth series as prepped for the next chapter of Isaac, or even some of my non-Isaac content like Spelunky 2 or my first looks at new great games. I'll catch you guys in the next video. You have a good one. Bye-bye.